Well, hello, friends. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Or takes, if you like it better that way. I like to call them pearls. Nugent Hopkins has signed an eight-year, $41 million contract. That's $5.125 million per year with the Edmonton Oilers. Eight years. He's 28 years old. This will bring him to until he's 36. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what other people's takes or pearls on this is, are. Um, yeah, Nugent Hopkins signed right away with the Edmonton Oilers. He was a first overall pick. Has been with the Edmonton Oilers his whole career. Uh, this is actually a reduction in salary for him as he signed a $6 million contract with uh, Craig McTavish, um, his first contract, which was, at the time, considered fairly high. And as it turned out, for some of it, it was, it actually wasn't too bad. Now, why eight years, people will say. Why couldn't you just sign him for five? Well, he's becoming an unrestricted free agent, you know. So he's got a lot of leverage. He can leave. If he wants, and I would imagine somebody out there would have paid him more than 5.1 for eight for eight years. I really do believe that. A lot of people are saying, well, you know, with the flat cap, people aren't going to throw money around. Don't you believe it? There are teams out there with cap space. There are teams that are think that they're one piece away from making the playoffs, and uh, they would sign Nugent Hopkins. There are also teams like the Columbus Blue Jackets who really don't have any centers that – uh, they could afford to give him six, six and a half. So it could have hap- it could happen. Um, now for the Edmonton Oilers themselves, there are several ways they could have won here. Um, the Edmonton Oilers historically have had a difficult time signing free agents. Um, Edmonton's a smaller market, it's cold weather. Um, it's not the sexiest city in the world. So when you when yeah, when you have a player who obviously likes playing in Edmonton, who uh, has been loyal to Edmonton and now is showing more loyalty and wanting to stay here, and has put up some decent numbers, which we will look at in a second here, um, it's I think it's not a bad deal. Is he is it going to be worth five million when he's thirty six years old? Well. Um, as we said, we'll look at the numbers. When he's 36, he may, he's probably not going to be the point producer he is right now. But the thing is, Nugent Hopkins is excellent defensively. He's a very good two-way player. Eight years from now, the cap is going to look way different than it does now. I don't think a $5 million player is going to be anywhere near a 70 point, 60 to 70 point player in the league. If you're doing 30 to 40 points and you're playing excellent two-way, you might be sitting right about where you need to be at $5 million. So my only question with this was Nugent Hopkins has been with the Oilers for a long time. Nugent Hopkins did not help. Well, I shouldn't say that. The Oilers didn't has, haven't done well the whole time Nugent Hopkins has been playing for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, is that Nugent Hopkins' fault? Is it possible that they could have let him go and went after a bigger fish out there, a shooter, to play with McDavid? Possibly. Is it, it's also possible that they can still find room to add a player at $5 million a year. Um, so another thing is Kenny Holland is a firm believer in treating those that are loyal to you well. He did it in Detroit. And he's doing it here. I'll tell you, it goes a long way if you do want to sign free agents. It goes a long way for those free agents to see that you take care of the players that are loyal to them. So in that way, it adds value there. Also adds value in the room because everybody likes Nugent Hopkins. And we're going to look at his numbers now. Before I do, though, Hit that subscribe and the bell, and I'll send you a my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, pearlocopter, right to your door. Ah, thank you. There, see? There you go. Hernandez.
Could you get in the pearl helicopter, please, and send that fellow that just hit the subscribe button a my NHL pearls origin message? There you go. Everybody loves a pearl necklace, right? Right. Okay. There. You go. See how quick that was? Okay. Let's look at. Let's go to cap friendly, shall we? And we will look at. Ryan Nugent not options and numbers, which I'm going to have to leave a little bit, do a little bit of fancy dancing here with my thing. Yes, there we go. Okay, Ryan Nugent Hopkins was, like I said, drafted. He played for the Red Deer Rebels in Alberta. Um, so he's been Alberta. His in Alberta his not his whole his whole playing life. Um, he was he is from Burnaby, BC. So he likes being close to Vancouver. Obviously, it gives him many advantages. And it, for the Edmonton Oilers, again, it's great that a guy wants to actually stay and play in Edmonton. Um, he put up some decent numbers. When he was given that six million dollar contract, which I believe was in 2013-14, he was putting up about 56 points, and they projected him obviously to improve. It took him a while to improve, but he was playing for some pretty bad teams. His first really good year was probably right around 2017-18, um, when he put up 48 points in 67 games, and. Uh, looked like he was heading in the right direction. Again, Eugene Hopkins tends to go as well as the team goes, as we'll see here. Um, now, after that, he put up 69 points in 82 games in 19 and 20. 61 points in almost a point-a-game player. Last year, the Edmonton Oilers played decent, and he only put up 35 points in 52 games. Bit of a down year, but 478 points in 656 games is nothing to sneeze at. If you look at um, what other players have done in this league that are making $5 million a year, probably not too many that are making, that have done, that have done this well point-wise. Also, like I said, one of the better defensive forwards in the league. He can play left wing and right wing. He's versatile. That has been huge for the Edmonton Oilers. And not only that, he doesn't complain about it. You never hear it. He's one of the most low, they call this low maintenance. A low maintenance player is a player that you don't have to make special, thing, special uh, things for. Like you don't have to treat him out, out of the ordinary. You just let him play. Comes to the rink, he's happy, plays the game, plays it well defensively. Um, if there's one issue is his playoff numbers, although he had eight points in four games there in 2017-18, um, hasn't really played all that much in the playoffs, but neither have the Edmonton Oilers. I think it's a good contract. Tell me what you think down there in the comment section. Um, I don't know if the Edmonton Oilers could do anything different than this. I don't know if it would have been wise for them to do anything different than this in the situation that you're in. If you're in New York, if you're a Ranger, if you're a New York like New York Rangers, then maybe you can say, you know what, I'd rather go nine million for and trade for a player out there like Lion A or something like that that might give you forty goals. Nugent Hopkins is never going to give you that, possibly. But the Edmonton Oilers really don't have that option unless they overpay. A lot of players want to go to New York. Not too many players want to go to Edmonton. It's just the way it is. I live in Edmonton. I love it here. People love it here. But it's cold. It's a small town. It's not the sexiest place in the world. I'll tell you that right off the get-go. And that's the truth. So if you have somebody that loves it here like a lot of other people, I would say it's a good idea to keep them Wrapped up. Okay, let's look at some more stuff out there. Uh, I did a video not too long ago about uh, Shane O'Brien talking about the Calgary Flames forward, Matthew Kachuk. Now, Calgary Flames apparently, and this is according 
Uh, we'll see as we go. The Calgary Flames organization is sick and tired of the trade rumors surrounding Matthew Kachuk and are calling BS to the report put out by ex-Oiler Shane O'Brien. And we continue. Sportsnet's Ryan Pinder reached out to the Flames after the past few days. The Chuck wanting out rumors were spreading like wildfire, and it certainly sparked quite a reaction from the team. In reaching out to some folks around the organization, they described these rumors in two words. The first one being bull, the second one sounding a lot like shirt, which we know is shit. Bullshit. Okay. Now we are yet to hear a franchise reply, yes, the rumors are true, so that Put that in your back pocket. But, oh yeah, you, you very seldom does a team come out and say, yeah, it's true. That's what he's saying. But given the flame struggles and Kachuk's contract status, there certainly could be some merit here. Um, so it goes on to say that his contract status could be, a, could be the reason why, all of those sort of things like that. And I posted in here that Shane O'Brien – in serious radio is not a guy to throw these kind of rumors around like this. So is it not true because they say that it's not true? Here's the thing. Keith or Matthew Kachuk has not come out and said anything. Nothing. This is what I'm a little bit concerned about, about this rumor for Calgary. You would think that Matthew Kachuk would right away come out and say, you know, these aren't true, I want to be here, all of that stuff like that. Now, in the article, it talks about how, you know, he doesn't have to do that. Um, maybe he doesn't think the source is worth his voice. A couple things like that. But Shane O'Brien from Sirius Radio is a fairly reliable source. That I, I listen to Sirius Radio all the time. He's not, like I said, he doesn't just throw things around. And he's probably, he's run around, he knew, knows his father. He knows people in the league a lot. Serious Radio, this program, has players, general managers, Bettman, all, all of these guys, like all the people in the league, they bring in and do interviews with them and stuff. So it's not a nothing source. I'd be a little bit concerned. If I was a, if I was an organization, I'd be calling Matthew up and saying, hey, what, what's going on here? And if I really wanted to stay in Calgary and I thought these rumors were not true for the sake of my franchise, I would come out and say so, right? But he didn't. And so we'll have to see what happens after that, uh, after now. But uh, I'm still on the fence about it. I did a video about it. Check it out. Uh so now the next rumor that has come out is NHL Insider would not be shocked at all if Jones ends up with the Flyers. Now, as a my, my other team also is the Philadelphia Flyers, I'm hearing tons of this coming from the, the people in the Philadelphia Flyers organization. They have made it fairly public that they're interested in Jones. Elliot Friedman... Now, I don't know if you can get a much more reliable source than Elliot Freeman, but he has come out and said himself that it looks uh, pretty not likely that it would happen necessarily, but has informed the Blue, Blue Jackets. Elliot Freeman said that Jones, of course, has informed the Blue Jackets that he's not going to sign there. Um and Freeman believes the Flyers are a legitimate possibility with stick taps to uh, Mert Mertidis of the Flyers Broadcast Network. Here's what Freeman had to say on Sirius Radio. Remember what I said about Sirius Radio? Sirius Radio Network has Elliot Friedman. So I would say it's not a bad... Uh, it's not a bad network. It's not a bad source. I'm sure he would probably be very interested in going to a place like Dallas or Colorado because he's got attachments to those places. I just don't know if I see the fit. The one team I wonder about right now is Philly. They can do it. 
And B, I wonder how Jones feels about that. That's one of the teams I look at right now, and I say I would not be shocked at all if the Flyers end up there. Now, this was a little while ago, and since then I'm hearing that the Flyers are making it very vocal that they are interested in Jones. Over the last five seasons, Jones on ice, even strength, goal differential is plus two. This season, his defensive zone percentage at even strength was 44.6, and he has been over 50 only once in his career. For the sake of comparison, Shane Gostaspear, more of an offensive-minded blue liner, had a 44.2 defensive zone start percentage at even strength this season, just behind Jones. Niskanen had a 55.8 defensive zone start percentage at even strength in this one season with the Flyers. Now, okay, I've heard all this. And this is what I wanted to talk about. Analytics people are basically saying that Jones is not very good defensively. And if you look at his defensive stats over his career, it appears that way. However, earlier in his career, he did look very good. Now, I'm going from eye test here. I have uh, Peyton on the radio, a guy that I really enjoy, who is part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Who, which is not a Flyers network, by the way, although it started out that way. It's an all sports, all teams, everything network. It's part of our network. I think he does very well with analytics. He's come out and said the same thing. I go more off of eye tests, but I do listen to analytics people a lot because they're smart. And I've learned a lot from analytics. So I would say, um, oh, his father's a Sixers fan? I didn't know that. So he's a Sixers assistant coach, his father, Popeye Jones. Wow, I didn't even know that. So there you go. There's another in for the Philadelphia Flyers. The last two years, I will say this. I watched a lot of Columbus games. I'm a big Tortorella fan. And I have to say that Jones looked very apprehensive in the defensive zone. He looked indecisive is the word I would use. Um, he hasn't played well the last two or three years. That is the truth, no doubt about it. When he was drafted, he was drafted um, just do, just after Drouin by the Nashville Predators. He was traded to Columbus for Johansson. I still think that was a that was a, a, actually um, a really good deal. But he didn't really progress in Columbus. So now you're asking the Philadelphia Flyers. He's a big boy. Jones is a big boy. I believe I have it here. He has, he's a bit 6'4", 209 pounds. He's only 26 years old. He's making $5 million. You got to make sure you can sign him, right? My problem is here is what are, we, what are the Flyers going to end up giving up for a guy who, as it seems, looks like kind of a bit of a project? Um to work on his defensive play a little more. He's still only 26. Still has upside. Um, the thing is, he played in a Tortorella system. You think his defensive numbers would look well? It looked good. But sometimes, a, a forward who is more of an offensive-minded guy, which Jones is really supposed to be, can get fairly flustered if not given the opportunity to play the offensive game they were given, given the gift of having. And I personally think this is what was prob problem with Jones. He wasn't given the opportunity to play the offensive game that he wanted to play, and it really messed him up. Um, he was he didn't he didn't look natural the last two years. That's the best way to look at it. So yeah, will Philadelphia go after him? Possibly. What will they give up? That's what I'm concerned about. I'm hearing things like Sanheim, a first prospects like really good prospects. Um, Faraby, all kinds of connect me. These names are coming up, and that a little bit concerns me. Now, if they are sold on the fact that they think he, they're going to bring him in and they can turn him around and make him play a more natural style for him, and he's going to start throwing up some serious points because last year he had 28 points in 56 games. I'm sorry, that's not a lot of points for an offensive minded defenseman with poor defensive stats. He needs to be up here in this 57-point plateau, which I remember that year. He looked like he was playing more natural. 
I love Tortorella, but I think he might have messed up with Jones' head. I think Philadelphia might think that. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Tell me what you think about all of this fine programming. And uh, see you next time on Curly Wisdom Industries. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.